Hey everybody, it's Brent Central Arkansas. Today's video is about lazy gardening. And what I mean by that, as a breeder, I like to spend the majority of my time manipulating crops, breeding them, crossing them, creating new things. But what I mean by lazy gardening is that I'm going to simplify everything absolutely as much as I can. So I'm going to do some vertical gardening. I'm going to do some drip irrigation. I'm going to grow on fabric pots instead of in the ground. And I'm going to use landscape fabric, all of which I will share with you. I'll carry you along as I do it. First, I'll give you a quick pan from right to left so you can see the garden plot. It was 25 by about 72. The new one's going to be tw uh, 25 by 75. It's going to be a little bit bigger. And that is the plot location. You can kind of see, let me get my finger in here again. You can kind of see the outline here and then up here and then over. So behind my RV in the carport is the first top part here is a landscape fabric. That is 15 foot wide by 300 foot long. And that's going to cover two of what I call no-weed gardens in that the fabric is used to suppress weeds. And so I have two main areas, the one I'm talking about now, and there's another one behind the shed that I'll do in another video. But that fabric is used for both of them, and it should cover it just fine with two, two swaths uh, of that should do the 25 foot wide down here is the barrier fence that I was talking about. Not really so much a barrier. It's just, it makes it look attractive to me. And then each, there's two of those there. And they're four foot by a hundred foot in length. And they come with zip ties too to affix it to, well, whatever you want. T-posts or whatever. If you're going to go vertical, there's really no better option and flexibility than cattle panels. Cattle panels are 50 inches tall uh, by 16 foot wide, and they make an awesome trellis of various kinds. Some people bend them and make arches out of them. I did that last year, but this particular time I'm going to hang them on T-posts, and I have the T-posts right over here. Now these are six and a half foot T-posts, and they're altered, staggered, some this way and that way, because the trailer... It would be too heavy if I kept them all on one side. So uh, they're in the trailer so I can haul them with the lawnmower over to the garden area and I don't have to carry each individual one. I believe there are 45 or something like that. Three per cattle panel. I may end up going with four depending on how three work. Uh, we'll just see how that goes. It starts to get expensive after, you, after a while. But this investment in the T-Post, I've had T-Post for 15 years. So once you buy them, you've got them, pretty much, if you buy quality T-Posts. The cattle panels, I've, have, I've used them for a couple years, and they look just as good as they did when I first got them. So the cattle panels will last a real long time. So it's kind of an investment. And in the bag there are the little metal pieces that hold whatever to the T-Posts. These are the fabric pots I'm going with. They're 10 gallon. I'm going to take one out here. I think I've opened this one before. Yeah, and I'm going to show it to you. Each one of these boxes has 20 in it. I've got several boxes I'm going to grow in. I'm hoping these are an investment that will last many years. If not, I'll go back to plastic containers. So that is a 10 gallon, and that should handle a squash plant or tomato plant quite fine with drip irrigation. So that's what I'm going with. Went with a little bit of a yellow stitching here. And if you're curious about anything I'm using in this video, if there's a link in the description. Now in the description, it doesn't fully open when you go below. You have to click on the see more. And that's a link that opens the description fully. But in that, you'll see an Amazon store. And all these will be examples you can look at. Uh, if you want to emulate or copy anything that I'm doing. But regardless, you can still look at it and get an idea for anything else you want to buy because none of this stuff, gardening is never set in stone. There's a lot of ways to do it. So I'm just sharing with you how I'm doing it this year. And you can do it. You do you. That's all I'm saying. 
those pots have to be filled with something, right? And you can use a little bit of garden soil. Hit the tripod there. You can use a little bit of garden soil, but it's really not recommended for good drainage, which you really need if you're going to grow in any kind of container. So what I've got here is some staggering potting mix. I bought a bunch of it um, in the fall last year because I do winter garden in the grow room. That's going to be one of the components that's going to go in it, just one. Another component is peat moss. This is Majestic Earth brand. I get our local Lowe's. I think it's like 10, 11 bucks for that. What is that? Uh, two or three, three cubic feet. Has a lot of material in that one bag there. You can see that there's a crate there, um, a pallet rather, that I had several. I think I had 10 of those bags for all of last year's growing. And I used two or three for the winter grow. So one goes a long way for sure. This is going to comprise 50% of the mix. The stay green that I just showed you, that's going to be about 35%. And what I'm about to show you is the remaining, or 15% or so. Now this is a compressed bale of parboiled rice holes. When they parboil it, um, it essentially makes it um, neutral in pH. And it doesn't, uh, if you don't know anything about rice holes, rice holes have a lot of lignin in it and it does, and it takes forever for it to break down in a container especially, but it's a fantastic perlite substitute. And I'm also going to use it not only in the mix, about 15 to 25 percent, I haven't quite made up my mind on that yet, but I'm also going to put it as a mulch on top of the containers. That, a couple inches of this uh, amendment, or this uh, parboiled rice holes, will severely detour insects from getting in it because there's just no pleasure to it because of the way they dry out and it's kind of, you know, um, not flexible, but it's not a good harboring medium to, to get into. All right, that will conclude this video. It is the what was and what will be introduction to my lazy gardening. What you're looking at now is the mapping out of the garden plot area. And what, the, what I've got in there are tent stakes with tomato twine wrapped around it, which will, uh, that's how I do my lines in the garden. And uh, the tape measure that you see there with the little handle, that, that's, uh, I don't know, 150 foot or so of tape measure. Um, a thousand feet. I don't know. It's it's more than enough to do uh, the 75 foot length. But that's what I'm going to use to square it up and line everything up uh, the way I need it. So that's the next video. This is Brent. We'll see you guys later.